Hi everyone, let's go over my low time frame bullish and bearish Elliott Wave scenarios on Bitcoin. Starting with my low time frame ABC scenario where we're looking for a zigzag to the downside in an ABC where the most common target is between the 1 and the 1.236 sitting between 28.1k and 27.6k. Now this target area is just above a support area that we have so one can imagine that if this low is taken at 28.8k that price finds its way to the next support area also because there is not much structure over here to support price so actually this target area for C is a little bit in the middle of nowhere and the rare targets being the 0 0.618 and the 1.618 have more other confluences with the blue support area over here being between 26.8k and 27.4k now as mentioned the 0 0.618 is a rare target for a wave C but it is a target nonetheless for potentially the low of wave C and then continuation to the upside what is is important in this scenario is the high over here of a wave B because if this is the high of B you're looking for downside in a wave C you don't want to see this high being broken because if we're thinking about potentially continuation to the downside you're thinking about this being a wave one followed by a corrective wave two for then a continuation to the downside in a wave three and a wave two is not allowed to take the high of the wave B or the origin of wave one one could say now what is also important is that this wave two is already getting very long in time Currently, this high over here has been made just before the three FIP time, a FIP time taken from the high to the low of wave one, meaning that this move over here is almost three times the length of this wave one to the downside, which I think is still okay-ish for a wave two, but it is very, very long. And if price is going to grab this high once again, making a new high locally, then the corrective structure, potential corrective structure in this scenario would even be longer, but that is lowering the probabilities of of this being a wave two for continuation down in a wave three so that is something we have to observe in the more bullish scenario we are looking at the low over here to be the low of the corrective structure and potentially here a one two three four sideways four and then a five to the downside and now we are looking for a continuation to the upside in an impulsive trend right we had this impulse to the upside then we're looking for a three wave corrective structure before continuation to the upside once again that is the same over here upside three waves and then eventually upside or the low of c is already in and then upside right now in this particular scenario we are looking not for to a three wave structure but a five wave structure so one two three sideways four in a wxy and then a wave five to the downside one of the ways to get a target for a wave five is taking a trend based fib from the high of one to the low of three to the high of wave four toggle on the 0 0.618 and you will see it is very nicely respected and it is one of the targets for a potential wave five so that is very nice also again in confluence with the support area that we had over here between 28.8k and 29.1k and what is important is this uh, in this scenario is that you're going to find impulses because now we are looking for a continuation of the trend right same if wave c ends over here in the scenario of this being an abc you you now want to see impulsive structures towards the upside because you want to see a continuation of the trend so you want to see five wave move to the upside and at the moment it is actually quite difficult to count impulsive structures over here on the lower time frame if i zoom in shortly and we look at this scenario over here, then finding impulsive five wave scenarios is not very easily. You can count individual waves as five wave moves, like the wick that we had from the low looks like a five wave move if you go to the one minute time frame, for example. But if we look at this whole structure, because if this is the low of a wave five or C, you now want to see an impulse to the upside. Now there's two ways you can look for continuation to the upside. Either you get a one, two, three, four, five, like an impulse impulsive structure like the, the most common one that you see or you get a diagonal where you have a wave one two three four five right and then it looks like a diagonal like this another option is a more bullish option which is a one two one two one two before then a bigger three but at the same time it's just another diagonal so we have to look for an impulse or we have to look for a diagonal if i take a trend line and i connect the trend line to the highs, 
The problem that you can see is that this is expanding, which is usually not really something that you like to see in a diagonal because a triple one two or a diagonal in general for a wave one, a leading diagonal, by far most commonly, these are contracting diagonals and not expanding diagonals. So that is something we have to keep in mind. We do see a bit of a volume increase over here, which could signal potentially a lot of buying in this move to the upside. And it's very simple, as long as market structure stays with higher lows and higher highs you know it's it's market structure so as long as this is not changing one could potentially look for the upside however have a look at this over here price has been ranging in this section for already a very long time and you can see we tested over here again tested the low tested the low tested the support box again 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 and again before we now broke towards the downside and we are back testing a important support area that we had for a long time potentially now as resistance for then continuation to the downside just above the support area we have the volume profile of this range so first we need to pass this little four hour order block which has been hit by the way with the high if this one is passed, we need to get into the value area, maybe have a back test at the value area low for then continuation to the point of control, the value area high. If price can get back inside this range, probabilities are very high to look towards the upside. And if we do look towards the upside, we have a couple of resistance areas that are important. First of all, we have this resistance area around 30 to 30.1k. We have this one between 30.4 and 30.6k. And then finally, which is basically the last one before new highs here, between 31.1k and 31.3k. So this is definitely something I keep my eye on. And another thing you might recognize from another YouTuber, right? Expansion manipulation uh, or a distribution or accumulation manipulation and expansion. It's not really something I use. Uh, but yeah, over here, sideways range, that's just how I like to call it. You have a very long range, then you move towards the downside to grab the liquidity of the lows before then with that liquidity and also baiting people out right baiting people into potentially market shorting because we took the lows for then eventually a continuation to the upside so range taking liquidity and there you go expansion towards the upside however as you can see i positioned this green box above this support resistance flip because this is what is very important if you are looking i mean no financial advice as you say this differently if i would be looking for long positions, then my long positions were at the low over here at the support area. We over here had a bounce, we had some market structure, we had bullish CVD divergences locally. Whatever your strategy is, whatever you're looking for, whatever your entry requirements are, of course, if your entry requirements and your strategy says to go into whatever position here, you know, you follow your strategy. But in my case, right, my entry would have been over here or is here because you know it might be in a long so yeah very very interesting indeed but over here we're now at resistance so if we look very simply at the chart then i think it is very nice if price would move above this target area to maybe see a back test a move to the upside see what you want to see maybe with your entry requirements and your strategy and this could be a potential long scenario for then a continuation to the upside but at the moment we are simply backtesting support turning into resistance for potentially a move to the downside as well right so this can also be a short area if whatever you see fits your plan if we go to the CVD divergences locally over here, then first of all, we have very you know big one for our uh, bullish CVD divergences, but we have a lot of room to the downside to not invalidate this, right? So price can move very far to the downside and still have these very big bullish CVD divergences. So I prefer to always look at the more local CVD divergences. And if we look more locally, we do have a bit of bearish CVD from the high, lower high in price, higher high on the CVD, where this is then the target for these bearish CVD divergences, which at least locally would change a bit of market structure. And during this move towards the upside, we did see some bullish CVD divergences sometime. Higher low in price, lower low on the CVD. Bullish CVD divergence, this high was the target, has been taken. And also over here, some bullish CVD divergences. And if we then go to the AGGR uh, chart over here, template in Discord, then you can see lower high on price, but higher high on the yellow line. That is a bearish CVD divergence. Um, and if we zoom into the five minute, more locally over here then you can also see that 
on the blue line you had a higher low on price but over here lower low on the blue line which is a bullish cvd divergence also here higher low on price lower low on the blue line so the yellow line shows bearish the bullish line one you know when price is moving to the upside it is showing some bullish cvd divergences the bullish ones already played out this bearish one is remaining but please keep an eye on what is happening locally on the three minute and the five minute over here if you see bearish or bullish cvd divergences because the yellow line might be leading meaning that price is going to follow the cvd towards the upside and eventually take this high and i think the three minute or five minute divergences are going to tell the story of what is happening more locally we almost created bullish divergences here on blue just missing out so yeah it's important to keep an eye on those lower time frames now we also have news coming in in a little bit at 2 30 p.m central east european time so make sure you trade safe around these hours and if we then look at the probabilities we like to keep things simple right because that's what uh, you know trading it doesn't have to be very difficult on the low time frame with the two scenarios that i have shown you both this scenario the more bearish one potentially more downside or a more bullish one i'm very neutral I'm very neutral because I am looking at this support resistance area. For potential longs, they could have been entered over here. No financial advice, but that is my plan, right? I'm not interested in any longs over here because it doesn't fit my plan. So that is just my thing. If we go above the support resistance area, then I think the bullish scenario gets a much higher probability, especially if you do something like this, a back test, you see whatever you want to see, and then eventually continuation. And if price can take this high over here, it also invalidates a potential impulsive move to the downside. That's why the invalidation is here. So we like to keep it simple. First, we have to get past the support resistance area. As long as price is below the support resistance area and the value area low of the range, well, you know, the potential to move towards the downside and see continuation is still going to be there, right? You first want to get above the support resistance area, the value area low, maybe with a back test and then continuation. So we like to keep things simple. And this is currently what I am looking at. I hope this video was helpful or valuable to you. Please check out the most recent educational video I've made about the best trading indicator you can use. And for now, thanks for watching and subscribing. And I'd like to see you at the next one. Bye-bye.